Hello and welcome to Malmakes. In the month of May, I'm going to be doing something very special. I'm starting a new series that I'm calling Intro to Painting. This series is made for anyone, even beginners, where our landscapes are going to be a bit more simplified, our color palette is going to be a bit smaller, and I'm going to show you step by step how you can accomplish the landscape so you can paint alongside me. Let's talk about our supplies. I have an 18 by 24 canvas and mine's already been painted black. If you can't find one, you can just get a white canvas and paint it black yourself. As for paint, I always use a heavy body acrylic and for this painting I'm using magenta, cyan, titanium white, and then Mars black. I also have a liquid titanium white and if you can't find this, there's some other things you can do. Once I get to the step where we need this, I'll talk about that. I also have a natural sea sponge and if you can't find one of these you can just get a regular kitchen sponge and you can like take pieces and pull them off so it gets to be a funky alien shape like this. I have a few different paint brushes, I have some flats, I have a bright and then I also have a toothbrush which you'll need for this painting. So let's get started. I'm going to start by putting my paints on my palette. Now for my palette I have a glass palette and if you can't find one they're actually a little bit expensive. There's a few things you can do. They sell plastic ones. You can also use a foam plate. Um, in college I painted on cardboard to mix up my colors. So I have a glass palette and I'm going to just start by putting a little bit of paint of all of my colors onto my palette. Now my brand of paint is Golden Artist Colors and I'm using Heavy Body like I had said earlier. And I really like these paints, I started using them in college because they're very opaque, at least the colors I'm buying. And they're high quality, highly pigmented, I can add a little bit more water to thin them out if I need to. Liquitex makes another Heavy Body that's really good. Um, Liquitex Basic is okay, it's not quite as good but it'll get the job done. You can even buy the really cheap craft paints from Walmart or any other craft store, they'll get the job done too. Now, the only color I really want to mix up is a violet, and because I have the red and the blue on my canvas, I can do that. I'm going to be using a palette knife instead of a paintbrush. Now, the reason I'm using the palette knife is because if I use the paintbrush, it's going to get all gunked up and I'll just have to keep washing it before I paint. The palette knife is really nice because I can just wipe all the paint down and it's cleaned, ready to go immediately. So in order to do that, I'm just going to take a little bit of my red and just kind of scoop it like it's some butter and then just flip it over and lay it flat on my palette. And then I'm gonna do the same with the blue, just cut some off, and then I'm just going to flip my knife upside down and stir my colors together until I have a nice violet that I like. If it's too maroon colored, I can add more blue, and if it's too indigo, I can add more red. But I think I did a pretty good job here of getting both colors equal to get a nice violet. Now it's very spread out, so after you have everything mixed, you just take your knife on the side scrape up your paint like so and then you just lay a nice little puddle down just like that then I'm just going to dunk this in some water wipe it off and it's set to go for the next color if I need it now this Skyrim painting is going to be a nighttime scene and I'm going to start by using my sponge instead of any paintbrush so I'm just going to dunk this in some water just to get it prepped and ready to go and you're going to want to do this with any sponge whenever it's dry so you have it nice and saturated but it's not dripping wet when you squeeze it. So I'm going to be starting by taking some colors on my sponge and let's start with a little bit of blue. So I'm just very lightly tapping the sponge into the blue paint. I don't want a ton, I just want a little bit. And then I'm gonna go ahead and start tapping it onto my canvas. And because I want this to kind of be a bit of like a Milky Way scene, I'm kind of doing this trail, I guess you'd wanna call it. So there we go, we got a trail. And I have a little bit over here where the paint was a bit too thick when I first tapped it down. And I'll just tap on that and kind of work it until it goes out a little bit. So I'm going to pick up a little bit more and kind of do the opposite side now. Just going back into the blue just to make this a bit wider. And it's very important that you tap the sponge instead of like brushing it. 
And if you want, you kind of want to go back over some of the spots you want to before so it's not just like a pure circle of your color. And it kind of blends out into the blank canvas behind it. I'm going to go into a bit of the violet next. So I'm just tapping the sponge into the violet paint and I don't want it to get too saturated with paint because I'm not trying to make a stamp. I'm just trying to dab a little bit onto it. And when I'm doing the purple, I want to go a bit into the blue so I have a nice transition between the two instead of like a stripe. So I'm just working my way into the blue and then back out onto the other side. gonna pick up some more violet. I'm gonna keep working my way all the way out to the corners. Now I think I want to go back into some of this blue out here, so I just took a little bit more blue on my sponge. I'm just going to kind of work that back into some of the purple out here. And I think that's just a personal choice. I think there's too much purple, and I personally like blue a bit better, so that's why I'm doing that. Now I want to bring in a little bit of that red, and I don't want it to be bright, bright, bright red. I kind of want it to be a little bit more purple. So I just tapped the purple first, and then I tapped into the red, and I decided to lighten it up, so I also tapped a little bit of white. And in order to mix it right here on the sponge, before I go to my canvas, I actually just kind of dabbed a little bit until I thought the color was pretty good. So I'm going to take that and start to maybe lay this around here. And just like before when I was doing the blue and the violet, I kind of want to blend this out. Into some of the rest of this. And it's very important that you dab. If you dab too much and just keep blending and blending until nothing's left, it won't look like this. It'll start to look like just a mishmash and it's going to be just crazy stuff everywhere. So you just need to make sure you keep dabbing, but you don't want to go overboard with it. And if you feel like your colors are not showing up quite enough, or if it's not blending too much, you can just grab a little bit more of the blue maybe, and just tap back into that. So I've gone and done the same thing. I tapped into the white, into the red, and just a little bit of the violet, so I can go ahead and bring it in on this other side. Now I'm just going to blend this out because I want everything to be a bit lighter and the reason I didn't do that before is I want this to be a bit dark to have layers of the color build up. So I just kind of mix more of a violet and then I'm just going to work this outwards. On the other side, I'm just going to work my way backwards by just starting with the blue in the corner like I had opposite on the top side. Now I'm moving a little bit more into a violet, just tapping. Now I've done too much of the red in the middle, so I kind of just mixed up more of a lavender purple just a touch of red to it, just to tone this paint down. I've also mixed up a little bit of more white into it, just to lighten it up right here along the edge of this. Now I'm just going to do the same thing on the other side. I had that lavender, I'm just going to tone that pink down, because I think it's too pink.
before I move on to the next step, the centerpiece, um, because I'm still seeing the canvas through it, it's very matte in comparison to my paints. So I just have a little bit of black here on my sponge that I've mixed in with some blue and a little bit of the purple just to kind of fill that in so it's not so solid black anymore. It will also allow me to get rid of any bumps in that that I don't like. So I took a minute just to get rid of a couple of them that I thought maybe were a little too pointy. Not quite natural enough. There we go. Time to move on to the next step. Now comes the step where I said you needed that liquid titanium white, and you can use your heavy body if you thin it down with water. It's something like 80% paint, 20% water to get the right consistency. If you go too much water, your paint won't adhere to the canvas and will cause some trouble later. So you kind of have to be careful on that blend. You can't add too much. There's a few other mediums that Golden in particular make, airbrush transparent extender, acrylic glazing liquid, and um, these will make your paints transparent, which is not what we're going for, but you could use these in combination with water to thin them down. The next step is putting in the stars for our sky. And like I said, I'm using this transparent titanium white. I'm just gonna put a little bit on my canvas, and it's very thin, it's kind of like water. And then I'm just gonna use a plain old toothbrush. This is one I got for free at the dentist's office that no one brushes their teeth with. And I'm just gonna lay it very, very perpendicular to the can um, to the palette and just kind of tap some of that paint onto the brush. I don't want very much. If I have too much, it's gonna make big globs of stars and I don't want that at all. But once I have a little bit, I can hold it straight above my canvas and start to pull the bristles back and just give a nice splattering of stars. Now, where I've made the color lighter here, right along this rift, I wanna have the highest concentration of stars that I can. So if I need to, I can just grab a little bit more of that liquid titanium white, and go ahead and put more stars in. I like using the toothbrush because it gives a nice fine mist. They do sp sell specialty paint brushes for this, but I think the toothbrush works just as good and I got it for free. Our next step is to start putting in some pine trees. So using that plain Mars black, I'm just gonna go ahead and start to draw in their trunks. And I'm just gonna start how tall I want one to be and just bring it all the way down. It's okay that I did that down there. It'll end up being solid black later. I'm not too concerned about it. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw maybe one. Maybe this guy's a little bit shorter. Maybe I'll make this one a bit closer and shorter. This one will be a bit taller. I'm just using one of my bright brushes, which is kind of like a flat, but shorter. Uh, maybe I want this one to be real close. That one a bit shorter. Another one that's tall next to it. I think I decided I want this one to be a bit taller. I'm just kind of to make these guys a bit taller over here. Just so I kind of have this progression of them getting shorter towards the right. Now in order to bring in the pine needles, I'm just going to load up my flat with a little bit of paint and start on the corner of the brush. And just kind of dab back and forth a little bit, almost like a little bit of a zigzag, until I have enough paint that's going side to side that I can lay my brush totally flat. And then I'm just going to keep painting zigzag back and forth. And I'm going to do that all the way down, kind of going out. I'm not trying to make this a huge triangle, but it's gonna go out and then it's probably gonna just even off like a weird rectangle. So let's fill the rest of that sucker in.
once I get to about there, I'm just going to switch to the next tree so I don't get too confused about where I am. I'm just going to do the same thing with this guy. Just bring him down a little bit until he starts to run into where the next one goes. Now the same trick with this applies that it did for the sponge. You don't want to go too far into your tapping motion that you have with your brush or you're going to end up with like this crazy, crazy mess and it's not going to have these nice little pine needles that we have here. When you get down into this part of the tree where it's not so important to see that, go all out. Just tap the heck out of it because it'll go a lot faster. It doesn't matter if you can see any of this or any needles. So. Go for it down there, but you need to be real careful up top. I think this guy needs to be a little bit taller. Yeah, make him taller. And because I'm tapping, I'm not thinking too much about, oh, you know, this one's needles are a little bit further than this one. It's nature, we'll let it do its own thing. Now to answer a few questions you may have, can you use a round brush? Yeah, you could use a round if you're really careful. Um, I like using the flat brushes because I can set it on the corner and then work flat as I work my way down the tree. Um, you know, any brush that works for you, try it out. Um, I can even move to one of my really big flats down here and I actually plan to, which is why I left it blank because this little guy is gonna take a long time to fill all this in. Another thing you want to do is you want to try and keep this brush nice. So when I'm picking up my paint, I'm pulling it along with the bristles to try and keep them nice and straight. They're not getting too messed up, hopefully. Now that I've filled the base of all my trees in, just kind of to fill in the solid line that's separating them from the night sky, I just picked up a bigger brush. And I'm just gonna kind of use the same motion, just so when the paint dries, if it's gonna leave a texture, it's all consistent throughout the entire thing. So I'm just gonna keep using this big brush to tap in the rest of these needles. Because this is Skyrim, of course there's going to be a dragon in it. So I'm going to go ahead and draw mine out with chalk. Now the great thing about chalk is you can erase it with some water as long as you're careful and definitely after your paint has dried you can get rid of it. Now you may not be comfortable drawing a dragon, you could draw a spaceship, some other character from a different game, whatever you're comfortable with to draw. I've drawn in the dragon with chalk. Next, I'm just gonna use that same black I had used for my trees and fill him in. And I'm gonna fill in everything except the parts in between his fingers, like the skin flaps there. I'm gonna do something different with those. So I'm just using a smaller brush and I'm just gonna go ahead and start to fill everything in. I can paint on top of the chalk if I need to. I can paint around it. It does sometimes kind of get into your paint and cause a little bit of trouble, but I found it's not too bad. I really enjoy drawing with it, so I like to use it in my paintings. For the skin of the wing, I just kind of mixed up some of that black I had with a little bit of water, not too much, just to tone it down. 
And that's what I'm going to use to fill in the wing. So it's slightly transparent because some of it is a little transparent in the game. Some of the dragon's wings. So I think that works really well with this. And if I find it's too transparent towards the top, I can just grab some of the pure heavy body without any of that in. And just kind of fade that down into it. While the dragon is drying, I can't get rid of any of that chalk, so I'm going to let that sit for a while. In the meantime, I'm going to go on to my final step, which is signing my name. Now, I like to do it kind of situationally. I can't do black on this painting, obviously, and I kind of like to match it to whatever is going on in the picture. So I'm going to start by painting my name white, which gives me a lot more options for color. Now I think that white is a bit too harsh. It's really contrasting with the rest of the piece because everything is so dark. Now once that's dried, I can go ahead and maybe make it blue or purple, or I could even add stars to it if I wish. Now that my dragon is dry, I can take just a damp paper towel and just get rid of any of this little extra chalk. Now I had mentioned before, I think my name is far too bright for this composition. So I've just mixed up some of that indigo purple I had from up here with just the red and the blue. And I'm gonna go ahead and just fill my name in. And we're done. We have our beautiful night sky with our Skyrim dragon flying overhead or whatever you've chosen to paint. If you're interested in this piece, you could buy a printer or poster or bid on this original canvas. There's links down below. But what I'm most excited for is to see what you've painted. If you've painted alongside me today, I'd love to see it, so please take a picture and tweet it at me. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss future episodes of Mal Makes, including more intro to painting videos. And I'll see you again here for another video game painting.